Now, I want to talk to you this morning about, uh, I titled it Doorkeeper. Doorkeeper. You know, there's, there's uh, several different things that, that we may bring out, but there's, there's one instance where Joshua said, I would rather be the doorkeeper in the tabernacle of God than to have everything that my heart desires, you know, to, to, to achieve and accomplish everything in the natural. And he said it's, it's because it is, is the presence of God. It represented the presence of God. And to be a doorkeeper. What is a doorkeeper? A doorkeeper is one that has the authority to allow that which is inside to come out or that which is on the outside to, to go in, right? So it's the keeper of the, of the door. And another word that is used is gate. And I want to set a little bit of a foundation so that you can see what it is that I'm talking about because we are in um, certain times now uh, today in our society and not just our society but uh, in our families, right? So I'm going to be talking on different levels, the main one being you as an individual. Praise God. Amen. Do you know that you are the doorkeeper of your heart and of your life and if there's things inside you that you don't like and don't want, you can open the door and get rid of them. Get rid of it, right? If there's things that you desire in life, uh, but it seems like it's been elusive, whether it be healing or, or prosperity or, or uh, uh, re relational things, whatever it may be, you are the doorkeeper that you can open the doors of your heart to allow that to come in, right? See, God is not a respecter of persons. Say it with me. God, God is, is not a respecter of, of persons. persons. Meaning this, that what he will do for one, he'll do for any. Amen. Now, I know there's a little bit of difference in, in, in the stipulation here about the grace of God, right? Okay? So if you uh, say, well, I, I'm going to be a pastor then. No, if you're not called to be a pastor, don't be one. <laughs> if you don't have the grace to be a prophet, don't be one, right? Don't just spout out a bunch of stuff, you know, and say, oh, I'm a prophet. Amen? Uh, there's a five-fold ministry. The five-fold ministry is graced by God to fulfill those positions in the kingdom of God, right? Uh, and, and I've said this over and over and over, and, and, uh, and I'll say it again is that um, our, our church's denominations and everything has everything flipped upside down. The five-fold ministry is graced by God to perfect and mend the ministers. You are the ministers. One of the lies that the church bought into yeah. hundreds of years ago is the separation between clergy and laity, right? right? And so the clergy is, is, is put up on a pedestal. And, and in certain denominations, that's a pretty high pedestal. You know what I'm saying? And then you hear things that, you know, don't touch God's anointing. God will kill you. Right? And, and never even think everyone is anointed. Come on. Come on, man. Preach it. Hello. And so you remember when Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee and he saw the fishermen there and they had just come in. They fish at night over there because the water is so clear. And uh, when they come in with the catch and they separate it and, and put it in the baskets and things and, and then they uh, sit down, they clean the nets and they mend the nets. They do what? Clean, clean, clean the nets, nets and mend the nets. Well, see, that word mend is the same identical Greek word where it says that the five-fold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints. The word perfect and mend are the same word. Well, we like the word perfect, but not so much men. <laughs> right? And the reason you men is because if you get a gaping hole there, then all your fish are going to get away. Right? And so... Uh, Jesus has come, and I'll make you fishers of men, right? Or mankind in, in the word there, right? So each and every one of you, and even the fivefold ministry included, right, is for catching 
<coughs> mankind catching people. Amen? And God didn't, des didn't set it up where you have certain evangelists and certain people, you know, that they go out and they hold these meetings and all the people come in, they get born again, and, and, and you've got certain people that, that uh, just have that, that personality and that, that, that grace, and, and, and they're out there all the time looking for who they can get, right? But the majority of Christians aren't looking for someone to get. Right? And they, they even, you know, their, their knees start having fellowship together. And start knocking, you know, if they feel like God wants them to talk to somebody. Right? And, and so, if, if someone is to come into the kingdom of God through the majority of Christians, it's almost by accident. Right? <laughs> right? Because we're, we're fearful. We're fearful. What are they going to say? What are they gonna, well, what does it matter? Well, what if they don't like what I say? And? Hello? Come on. Listen, it's an opportunity. Praise God. Amen? And I suggest that what you do is offer something good. You know? So don't go out there and tell everybody that they're going to go to hell if they don't receive Jesus. <laughs> that, that's not good. That's not good. Amen? But you can say, hey, do you know that God loves you? And he has a plan for you? That's a whole lot better than the life that you're living. Amen? And so what do you do? You, you, you start, you start uh, telling about the goodness of our God. Amen? And how many of you know that when you found out that God was good, it changed your opinion of him? Come on, man. See, a lot of people think that, and because they've been taught, they think that God's up there and he's, he's, he's got that baseball bat within reach. <laughs> right? And he's just watching you. <laughs> and you get out of life. Quack! <laughs> right? And if he doesn't get you, then the preacher will. <laughs> Hello? And... In a lot of denominations, it, 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 it's, it's, I'm not saying that, that you know, they're bad people, but I'm just saying that over time, they have found that it's easier to control people if they're afraid. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So yeah. what are you going to do? I can't follow you around and see what you're going to do Friday night. So I'll tell you. Before Saturday morning, God's got your number, and you may end up in the emergency room. <laughs> yeah. you, might, you might have second chances about that Friday night. You know, second thoughts. Amen? And so if I can induct enough fear inside of you, then you're going to be a nicer person. You're going to be a nice little Christian person. <laughs> right? Until some of the things that are going on in the inside of you are starting to overtake you. And so in order to yield to temptation, you've got to harden your heart to God, the preachers in religion, right? And that's the reason a lot of people, they don't know how to overcome temptation. So if they find themselves involved in doing things and living a lifestyle that they know that they shouldn't be living... First thing they cut off is church. Who wants to come to church and face the preacher? Right? right? You know when you sit there and he looks at you, you know he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he doesn't, but you think he does. <laughs> you know, and he comes up and he shakes your hand and he usually doesn't. And says, well, how you been this way? What'd you do this weekend? <laughs> like he never asked me right but when you begin to realize that God is a loving God that he's full of mercy and his mercy goes before him and then grace follows him what does that mean mercy is he doesn't hold any iniquity or sin against you because of the blood of Jesus Christ grace is his ability that's freely given to you so that you can separate yourself from the things that you shouldn't be doing, right? 
And, and what we do is we develop forgiveness. We know we get out there and we do things we shouldn't. We say things that we shouldn't. You know, we may, may talk about other people and backbite and gossip. And we may, you know, sneak a, you know, a little, it's coming up tax time. We may, you know, throw in there a couple little extra deductions, whatever. And, 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 and then we feel really bad in our heart and say, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Okay, we're all good. And because we say, forgive me, and we know that he does, we think that we're all good, but we didn't change anything on the inside. We didn't change our opinion or our fellowship and relationship with this world or, or what's going on. And we got to come to the realization, right, that I am in this world. I'm not of it. So what we find out is that I am the doorkeeper of my heart, right? See, Revelation says what? That Jesus stands at the door and knocks. If anyone will open the door, then he will come in and sup with them. Well, people have taken that and used it as getting born again, but it's not talking about being born again. He's not out there pounding on the door of sinners. He's knocking on the door of his own people, saying, will you let me in? Can we have a relationship? Right? So it isn't about, did you make it to church? Did you tie? Speaking about tithing, how about that? You know, on a national average, there's about 8 to 10% of Christians that tithe on a regular basis. Now, we already received the offering, so it's okay. Lighten up. Right? But if you think about it, why is it so hard for some people to tithe? You know, and, and, and it's funny because we don't understand it. And, and I've heard people say, well, you know, I, I don't I don't tithe, you know, fully, but, you know, I, I, I tithe, you know, 3 or 4%. I'm working my way. Listen, you can't 10%, 2%. Uh, right. <laughs> tithe means 10%, right? Yeah. And so you can't, two, you can't 10%, 5%. I remember seeing a, a, a joke where it says on this, the billboard of this church, it says, the church of the 5% tithe. <laughs> right? <laughs> And, and you can't 10%, 5%, right? See, 10% is 10%. Come on, say that with me. 10% is 10%, right? I mean, that's simple, isn't it? So right there, we don't even understand what tithe is. What is tithe? What does tithe mean? Tithe is, is I got to give my money to God, and I would rather have it for myself, Right? Well, if I give God 10%, then I won't have enough. Or I'll have less than what I had. Hey, that's brilliant right there. Right there, that, that, is, that is natural wisdom, right? But see, here's the thing. God built it to a place that what tithe means, you know, when I first started you know, serving God, and I come in, it's, it's like, okay, now, now God wants 10% of your money. And I thought, well, you know what? If he gives me more, then I'll give him some. <laughs> right? I mean, if he, if he doubles my income, I'll give him 10%. You know, that's pretty brilliant, right? See, I didn't understand what tithe was. And then I sat in a meeting and they said, you know, uh, will a man rob God? Well, you have robbed God in that you've withheld your tithe. You want to slink and, and, and slither out, you know? It's like, no, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. Did it change me? No. It just meant that every Sunday I was sorry. Right? See, what it means? It means I had more faith in his ability to forgive me than in his grace to empower me. Come on, somebody. Okay? So I had a brilliant idea. There's some books and things that I would like to have and learn about God, and God would want me to learn about Him. Right? And so I would take my time and I would buy uh, books. I'd go down to the Bible bookstore and I'd buy books and things and maybe a Bible or whatever, and, and thinking that God would pat me on the back because I come up with this great idea. So I use the time to, to give me books so that I can learn more about Him. Hallelujah. And in prayer, the Lord says, no, that's not what it's for. I go, oh, okay. So then I saw that there's people in need of things. So I started using my tithe 
to buy groceries for other people and give away and you see people on the streets and things and 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 um, you know I pat myself on my back and uh, in prayer the Lord said no that's not what it is either and I thought well what is it he says check my word so I started looking at the Bible and it says bring all the the tithe into the storehouse the storehouse is is, is the, the the place for me it says so that there might be uh, bread for the eater, right? And so it's a place where you're getting spiritually fed and you're receiving from the things of God, right? And uh, so I started tithing to my church, right? Uh, it, it, it wasn't like fireworks and everything that went off or whatever because, you know, I would, I would put that in the basket and then I would just watch the basket. <laughs> <laughs> and see, my... my my heart wanted to go chase the basket, <laughs> right? And it's because I, I didn't understand, you know, what, what is this all about, right? So the Lord began to talk to me about eating my seed, and I didn't know what that was about. And so I started hearing some different people that taught on it, that gave me a different uh, point of view and, and, and outlook, and so... It, it drove me into the Word of God. And I began to study, right? Because you hear all kinds of things. It's not for today. It's Old Testament. It, I mean, you hear all kinds of things, right? It's not about a 10%. Yeah, but God owns everything. All right, well, what if he wants half yours? You might be free from the 10%, but he, he may want half of it. Come on. Well, now, wait a minute. God wouldn't do that, <laughs> right? So all it's built on is about our personal opinions and do we fully understand what it is all about and what he's doing and really, now here's the kicker because most people don't even see it what he's trying to do for you when I began to study and I went into the word of God and I began to research it and I began to see that tithing is New Testament, it, it absolutely is but it is not a law of tithing it is a grace of tithing, a grace of giving. It is a love affair with the God that has, has brought you out, right? And really what it is, is worship. It's praise and worship. It's thanksgiving. That's what it is. See, Jesus started teaching. He said, he said where the, your treasure is, that's where your heart is, right? Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. How much treasure do you put in that amount of money, you know, that we get to 10%. Well, do we have, I mean, can I just give him something, you know, like tipping, <laughs> right? And it says, well, yeah, but the Bible plainly says tithe. Tithe is one-tenth. So scripture talks about one-tenth or tithe, right? So it's not talking about a gift. It's not talking about an offering. It's not talking about, you know, what you feel um, good at letting go and, and whatever. It specifically talks about one-tenth. One-tenth of what? Well, one-tenth of increase, right? So what is the increase in your life? And then one-tenth is, is, you know, your praise to God. You can always see sometimes that, that, that people just move the decimal point over. <laughs> so we're going to get that 10%, but you're not going to get any more than that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like not rounding it off to the next higher number or whatever it is. It's, you know? And, and uh, we, we have this idea, we have this love affair with our money. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. And even though in our heart we would desire more, right? I mean, who doesn't desire more? But you have Christians, see, that will slam and get down on anybody that talks about money, anybody that talks about God will prosper you, God will bring uh, uh, money to you and, 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 and opportunities and wealth and everything else. And, and it's just, you know, they think that is so ungodly, and yet every one of them would love to have more than what they got. Right? But why do you want it? See, what I'm going to talk about this morning, and I, I'm just using tithing as an example. I was going to use something else, but 
just seems good. Hallelujah. Uh, because otherwise everyone, you know, goes over to politics. So, so talking about your money is probably safer than talking about your politics. Yeah. So, just say, thank God I'm not talking about your kids. So, so what is the doorkeeper of your heart? How should they uh, in embrace the grace of God, the goodness of God, the fullness of God? What should we do when we're looking at finances, when we're looking at money? And how do we come to a place where we begin to realize that God is trying to get something to us greater than what we have, but we won't let him go of what we got? Right? And... And, and until he can get you to let go of what you got, he can't give you what you don't have. And that's where, where tithing comes in, is that he wants to expand your borders. He wants to increase your finances. He wants to visit them. Now, now, on the other side, you have Christians, you know, that have tithed probably most of their life. And they, 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 would, they would rather, you know, smash them in the mouth than, than not tithe. All right, uh, but they don't believe God for an increase. They just believe that I'm supposed to, so I do it. Praise God! You're not going to catch me not tithing. You know why? Because I opened the door for the devil. I don't know devil in my life, so I tithe. Well, see, that's just as bad, but on an opposite end, right? So, what is your heart? Your heart is full of joy and thanksgiving to God for sending His Son who became our sin, that delivered us from this world, that we've become born again, people of the kingdom of God, you know, a holy habitation for our God, right? And out of this, this reason Paul said that God loves a cheerful giver, right? And, and, and a well-to-do giver. So we need to be gracious. What is grace? Grace is graciousness. Grace is it is, is really the essence of God in our life and heart, enabling us to do what we can't naturally do, right? So if I was to ask this, how many of you have the ability right now to become a multi-millionaire, okay? Some people would say, well, yeah, I believe I do, I do. Now, I'm not talking about faith. I'm talking about you and your, your talent, your ability. Well, younger people probably see more opportunity. But what if you have been retired for a while and then basically all that comes in is your retirement? Hello? Hello. And how's God going to make you a multimillionaire? Okay? Now, I'm not making it all about money, but what I'm saying is the grace of God is God's ability in you to do what you cannot do. Right? So most people are satisfied where they are, even though they would like more, they've already accepted the fact that they can't do it. And that's good, but they stop. <coughs> they don't take the next step, which is to accept and receive the grace of God that enables you to do what you can't do. How many of you could cause yourself to become born again and righteous of God? <coughs> See, nobody. Right? We all needed what? A Savior. We all needed help. Well, the Holy Spirit came into us and ministered to us and revealed to us what Christ has done for us. Then by faith, we accepted it as truth. And when that truth was accepted... It revealed the grace of God that went in, recreated your spirit, man. You became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes. You could not cause yourself to be a new creation. Right. It's completely, totally impossible. In a million lifetimes, you couldn't do it, right? But it's the grace of God. See, listen to this. We are saved, and the word saved is, is, is sozo. Sozo has been accepted and received by most Christians everywhere as being born again. Even though it includes being born again, it literally includes 
everything Jesus did in his earthly ministry, his death, burial, resurrection, his ascension on high, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. That includes healing, that by his stripes you were healed. It includes prosperity, he became poor that you might be made rich. I mean, it includes any and everything in an abundant, well-to-do life, way beyond any natural abilities that you have, right? And that's what grace is. So by grace, we what? We are saved or we step into this new creation reality, and that by faith. What is faith? Call those things that be not as though they are. Come on. And so we get hung up uh, when, when, when we're dealing with money, right? Well, we learn that by stripes we're healed. So if sickness tries to come to me or certain symptoms or something, let's go in Jesus' name, I'll break your power, get out of me by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. And we start learning that, right? And we've, we've accepted, we've received benefit. How many of you have been healed by God? You know, notably, you've been healed by the power of God. Let me see your hand. I want to see yours too. Raise it up. I'm looking. <laughs> okay? Now, now look around you. Put them back up. Put them back up. It doesn't hurt to keep your hands up anyway. Okay, look around. Okay, that's over 90% of the people in here. You know, why? We're a church that believes in the miraculous. We're a church that believes in miracles. We're a church that believes in, in healing, right? And so you're going to see it because we believe in it. Well, what if you attend a church that doesn't believe in miracles, doesn't believe in healing, doesn't believe it's for us today? How many hands would go up? Not too many. Right? Why? Because that's what they were taught to believe. That's what they'd accepted in their heart. And so the doorkeeper of their heart is God is through with miracles. So if they get sick, do you think that they want to be healed? You think they want to be well? You think you think they, they just, oh man, we're gonna die today. <laughs> you know, not too many people are like that. <laughs> but, I mean, Andrew Womack was at one time. You know, because yeah. <laughs> because he, he he just heaven was so excited he 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 just wondered is today the day, <laughs> right? But you're not going to see very many people healed supernaturally because they've been taught not to believe it, not to receive it, not to accept it, right? Is there something wrong with these people? No, there's nothing wrong with any of them. It's what they, the doorkeeper of their heart, determine that nothing supernatural concerning healing is getting in there. Come on right? now. What, what, what about finances? Right. How many of you have, have received some financial blessing and you knew it was God? Somewhere in your life along the way and you knew it was God. Amen? Get the, get, get the hands up there. Okay, look around, look around, look around. Okay, over 80%. Right? Why? Because we're a church that teaches that God wants to bless us financially. We're open to miracles, to the supernatural, to the miraculous. We know that it's possible for the Holy Spirit to move upon somebody else and to bring uh, money to us and, and to bless us, right? And we are blessers. I mean, we, we give. How many of you have ever given somebody money and they didn't deserve it? <laughs> right? Me. <laughs> How many of you have ever given them me? Me. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm just All right. So you see that there's a graciousness. So you see a group of people that have stepped into and believe what the Bible teaches about sowing and reaping and giving, yeah. right? So it isn't like we look around saying, hey, you look like you deserve 50 bucks today. Here you go. This is your day, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we just set it for 20. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And, and what, I, what I'm getting at is our attitude toward the Word of God becomes our attitude toward God himself. Even though your yeah. brain say, no, I love God with all my heart. There isn't anything that I wouldn't do. I wouldn't see, but the heart won't let you. Right? See, I can say, 
How many of you in here, I mean, if you had the funds and the ability, how many of you would give the church a million dollars? You know? Man, we got, we got about 60%. What are you in there? <laughs> uh, okay. that's, that's if you had it, if you had the ability. Right? Amen. You do it. Well, I'm here to tell you, you do have it, yeah. and you do have the ability. That's right. Yes. 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 right? So guess what? I'm agreeing with you. Amen. <laughs> I'm believing right there with you. Amen. Hey, but see, you don't know you have it. You don't know you have the ability. You're willing if you get it. But see, that's not faith. Right. That's not faith. Faith is believing you already have it, and in your heart you already gave it. Amen. Come on. Amen. And then the excitement comes. Praise God, hallelujah. Can today be the day I can write that million dollar check out for church? You know? And see, when you start getting into these things, you, you, you flush up a lot of emotions and a lot of thoughts and things. I had a guy come to me one time, and there was some contest, you know, $10 million. And he said, Pastor, he said, he says, I'm going to mail this in. He said, will you lay hands on it? Praise God, we're going to believe. And I know God uses you mightily. If you pray with me, I believe that God will cause me to win this thing, and, and, and I'll give the church 10%. Give you a million bucks, 10%. And I started to pray. I just said, you know, why not? Right? And I stopped and I said, how about this? How about I pray and you give 90% and you keep 10%? <laughs> and he pulled that thing away and looked at me and said, no, it's money entry form. I said, to tell you the truth, you're not going to get anything. <laughs> You know, he won't get it. Why? Because he wouldn't give the church tonight. No, it's a heart attitude. Yeah. Yep. It's a heart attitude. Listen to this. God, give me $10 million, and I'll give you $1 million back. Yeah. Could you make that deal every week? What a deal. Such a deal. Right? So think about 10%. If God is moving in our lives and in our hearts and, and causing things to happen, things we don't even know about, but it's happening, you know, and, and it's on multiple rounds, right? There's things that, that, that last longer than they would. Your heart lasts longer than when you don't go through the, the normal things that people do and, and, and everything. And, and all of that is adding, you know, to, to your substance or to your finances and stuff, right? Remember when the children in the, in, in the desert and said that their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out? And then, you know, think of how much they saved. Right. I'm not going to Coles. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or Gucci or somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And, and we don't look at those things. But when we're blessed, we're blessed. Yeah. Right? Every... Every work of my hand turns to my good, to my blessing. Everywhere I go, things work in, 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 in my favor, right? But see, a lot of people are just looking for that one big check to come. It doesn't mean it won't, but I'm saying open up yourself. Have a, have a thankful heart. Be appreciative, you know, that, that you watch over my day. How many of you think your life is worth more than a million dollars? Amen. Man, we only got 30%. Man. <laughs> you, want, you want to do over? How many of you think your life is worth more than a million dollars? All right? See, I caught most of you sleep, didn't I? Okay? Well, you got up today. Well, let me tell you something that's worth more than a million dollars. You're here in church listening to me. I know all ton, tons of people are saying, I'd rather have a million dollars. I understand that. <laughs> but see, you don't have the value of the Word of God, That's the right. truth and That's reality, right. and yeah. the relationship with yeah. God Himself. Yeah. Amen? Amen? In Psalm 24, 
And we're gonna we're gonna uh, quicken this up. But do you see what I'm saying? That and 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 we pick you know money because that that's that's a hard place, yeah. right? Honestly, how, no, I can't go there. <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say, how many of you would honestly say, it's like this is that one time, forgive me, Lord, I have lied. <laughs> but honestly, without raising your hand, how many of you felt a little under pressure when I was talking about money? Right? I see those hands that are not raised. <laughs> You know, why? Because it has an effect on us. Because yeah. we don't see and we don't understand. What is the tithe? The 10% is a seed that God now sends harvest into your life. Right? And when your heart finally sees it, when your heart will catch on to it, that he's trying to get something to me, Amen. not trying to get something to from me. Amen. Right? Amen. And that's where you begin to open yourself up. You go, whoa, okay, this is an easy deal. It's an easy deal. Now, if you're already accustomed to tithing, don't just throw it in the basket when it passes by. This is your heart. This is your life. Take it serious. God, I present this before you in representation of my heart and my life. And I gladly give 10 percent right and worship unto you and that's where it really comes from in the new testament is that it bumps over to uh, to abraham and melchizedek and has nothing to do with the law right come on right yeah. so we are redeemed from the tithe by the law right but we're not set free from the tithe by grace Right? So Abraham, when he presented the tithe to Melchizedek, the high priest, who Jesus is under the order of, right? He did it for what? That I owe you a bill? No. He didn't owe him anything. Right? He presented it as what? A thanksgiving. And he said that God is El Elyon, the God above yes. all gods. That God always puts my enemy under my feet. And that God always supplies. Right? And that's those three areas. And so that's what's passed over into the church of today. It really isn't an issue or a debate about tithing and giving that. What it is is how do you open the door of your heart to receive that God is El Elyon, the God of all gods. That God always puts my enemy under my feet. And that God always supplies. Yeah. Right? So it's not just needs, but then he enters in there the desires of the heart. The desires of the heart. You know that there's people. How many of you know that? No, I won't go there either. Okay. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> Psalm 24 and verse 1. It says, The earth is the Lord's. And all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Now the word clean hands literally means, uh, the word clean is innocent or guiltless, right? Well, the blood of Christ has made us innocent and guiltless, Amen. right? So he's talking about what? He's talking about born-again believers, right? Who will ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who will uh, open up? Who is the gatekeeper to the blessings of God, right? To the more than enough, 
right? It says those that are born of God, those that have become righteous, those that have received the blood of Christ. That's a born-again believer, right? Now look at this. The word hands through Scripture literally uh, means and signifies uh, actions or lifestyles, right? The hand of the righteous. Uh, and, and, and you look at Jesus, what did he do when the sick came? He placed his hands on them. What? His hands represented him, right? Uh, what is that hand to do, right? Don't have a slack hand. I mean, you, you go through scriptures, all kinds of scriptures that are talking about hands, the hand of the righteous, that God has, has uh, tattooed us in, in, in the, the hand of God in his right hand, right? Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but I'm working on it. Okay? So hand signifies lifestyle and decisions, what you're all about. It doesn't signify how much knowledge you have of the Bible. It doesn't talk about, you know, what kind of a church you go to and where you go to church and how often you go to church. But it's talking about what you have accepted and received as a biblical philosophy in life your everyday lifestyle, your thoughts, your, your opinions, right? See, we're, we're all born again. And you may be filled with the Spirit, have the evidence of uh, speaking a supernatural language, right? We can lay hands on the sick and they will recover, right? We can, we can drink any deadly thing and it will not harm us. I mean, because we're the righteousness of God. That doesn't mean we always do everything that we should have. Amen. Amen. And so, you, you know, we're, we all need adjustments in our daily life, in our daily walk, our daily attitude, our opinions of other people. Right? How many of you know it's real easy to cop an attitude about somebody that needs an attitude copped about them? <laughs> right? Amen. Okay. But here's, here's the whole thing. Okay. God, I'm sorry. I don't like them. You know, see, that isn't the point, right? That isn't the point. The point is your heart. See, it hurts your heart, and your heart is the only thing you have that opens up to God to receive the fullness of what Christ has given us, yes. right? And so it's so important that we have an open heart to God, right? And see, the most holy people are those that you don't see very often. Amen. <laughs> right? And you know when they hit the door of that church. Yes, hallelujah, praise God. Good to see you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And, and you are the epitome of success in a Christian walk. But see, if we follow you around all week, we just might find out you're a little more like us than you want to admit. <laughs> right? How do you know sometimes we're just a mess looking for somewhere to happen? Amen. But there goes the mercy of God that doesn't yes. hold us against Praise us. Lord. Right? If I was to say, you know, how many of you uh, actually say things that you're sorry you said? You know? And, and you don't have to raise your hand, but because uh, I know who you are. <laughs> and... And see, then what do we do? We feel guilty. You know, how many of you guilty? Have you ever guilty? Yeah. And see, we're still having this love affair with guilt. Come on, come on, You're right. somebody, You're right. somebody help me, somebody. You're right. <laughs> Amen. And the reality is, we don't understand mercy. Come on. Mercy doesn't hold that against you. Come it on. doesn't mean that there's not consequences. Come on. Let's pause for a moment. <laughs> right? Doesn't mean that there's not consequences. Right. Doesn't mean that there's not consequences. Right. Come on. Does not will never mean that there's not consequences. So could it be that some of these things that we think are attacks of the devil are just consequences? Come on. Come on, yeah. Mom. Yes. <laughs> huh? 
And maybe instead of looking for forgiveness and help from God, we should say, Holy Spirit, how do I establish my heart so these things won't come into my yeah. life? Yes. Right? Hallelujah. Yeah. See, it's like, I can't understand why my clothes are always muddy and everything. I just don't understand it. I'm having to wash it over and over and over, and I just don't get it, right? And God help me, see? But I like to wrestle pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and what I need is I need a miracle so that I can go wrestle the pigs, and then I come out shiny clean up. Come on, man. Hey, I might be talking to somebody, but anyway. What I'm saying is that there are some attitudes, some opinions, and actions that we've accepted as us that really need to be let go and changed and removed. And sometimes you just need to run from them. Right? But not with guilt. I'm oh, sorry, God, but I just can't help it. They're just so stupid. <laughs> right? No. No. You know, Holy Spirit, change me. Yes. Change my outlook. Yes. Change my opinion. See, that's what effortless change, transformation means, and that's by the grace of God, Amen. because we all know you're not going to do it. You're right. Yep. No. That's where grace comes in and does it. And one day you go, I don't care. You what? I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Are you feeling okay? Right? And all you got to do is sit down with someone and start talking, and everything in them will come out. Well, what do you think about politics? Well... You know what? Might be better if we don't have that discussion. <laughs> right? Come on now, somebody. All right? He says, he who has a clean hand, a guiltless way of life. Right? How do you become guiltless? Well, first, you have to accept the full forgiveness of God. And you have to accept his transformation working on the inside of you. And you have to, by faith, say, I am not who I was. I gladly let go of opinions. I gladly let go of things that I shouldn't be holding on to, right? And so I accept the things that God has, has brought through me. Now, now listen, here's where some of the problem is, is because there's events and things in the past that become snags, right? And they're hard to get out. And so sometimes we just cover them up, you know, put put a tombstone on there and say you're dead, knowing that it's not, right? But see, that's where the grace comes in and just removes this. Yes. And one day, you're fresh, you're new. The past, it doesn't have power anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because you see that there's a better life by letting go. And, and moving forward into the things of God. Amen? All right, look at this. Verse 7. It says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Well, it's the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. But who is this king of glory? It is the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. All right? So the word gate, you know, lift up ye gates. And the word gate is an entrance. You can either shut something out, shut something in. You can let something in. You can let something out. It's a passage. It's a split. It, it, it's a portal. Right? He says, so lift up ye gates. Right, it says to split, to open, and it literally means the mouth. Right? 
The gate was where commerce and judging were done. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that your mouth and what comes out of your heart through your mouth, right, the gate there, is where judgment and commerce take place. Commerce is what? That which benefits you, right? Judging is what? Judging is taking God's place, right? And it's out of the abundance of the heart, right? So we say, number one, I don't have a right to judge. He says, judge not lest you be judged. Who wants to be judged? I don't want to be judged, so I can't judge. Well, I know that they, you don't know why they do what they do. You don't know what they meant. You don't. Have you ever got offended over a text and it really was nothing to it? You see, text has no emotions. What? Look at what they text me. Now, you've got to figure out what emotion was behind it, what they meant by it. Right? How many have ever, you know, spoken a text and then sent it and then read what you sent? <laughs> Autocorrect is not good. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> right? Amen. So sometimes we let stuff out of our mouth and we go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Yeah, you did, you just didn't mean to say it. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, life and death are in the power of the tongue. What's in the power of your tongue? Everything. What's in the power of your tongue? Life and death. Life is embracing and receiving all that God has given you, all who Christ is, all the abundance of what has been transferred to you by being born again, right? Death means what? Death means separation. See, with your tongue, see, it's like, it's like we're separating ourselves from the fullness of God, from the benefits of God, from God himself, his relationship and everything, and we're just wondering, why, you know, what's wrong with God? Why, why, you know, why isn't he close? You know, I used to really feel him. You know, well, you know, stop and listen to yourself. Come on. I remember this couple, and, and they were kind of arguing, and, and she was a little upset at him because, you know, she looked at him and she said, you know, there was a time when we would sit together in the car, and I would sit right next to you. And you'd even open the door and let me in first. And we'd sit there and, 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 and drive and says, and, and you don't even sit by me anymore. And he looked at her like, huh? He said, well, honey, he said, we have bucket seats. <laughs> Things can change. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And so... We need to embrace the right change, okay? How many of you know that the winds of change are blowing severely yes. in our nation? Oh, yes. Right? There's even been prophecies that have come out and said that, that the winds are going to be, you know, stronger in, 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 um, in the next few months and things all over. And, and we've been seeing, we've been seeing winds where you usually don't have winds. There's hurricane uh, gusts of winds, you know, you know back in in, uh, in, the, in the, the northeast, the central east, and, and we've had some really strong winds and things like that. Why? He says that the, the natural is is convert, uh, convulsing, right? And there's things that are going on because unrighteousness is prevailing. It, it's taken a foothold. There's things that are happening, right? It says, if the righteous do well, the city will do well. Well, if the righteous do well, then the nation will do well. And we're under the gun now, and without being political, just looking at nature, there's things that are happening, right? And so we need to open up the gate of our heart to come out the door of our mouth to begin to talk about righteousness and goodness, right? See, the world has been put in our hands. And the world travails, and there's all kinds of things going, looking for the manifestation of the children of God. 
right? But the children of God are all out upset, talking, and you know about this and political and all this, and you know, and, and, and the world is going help, help, right? We need to wake up. Come on. We need an awakening yeah. within the righteousness of God, right? God's people, so that we get on board with what God's doing, yeah. right? Amen. You can't pray away consequences. Not everybody in America has been godly. Right. That was not prophetic. That's <laughs> just bad. Right? Amen. And as a nation, we we can we can call in consequences to us that are not good. And we just want them with a stroke of hand. Bless God, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you're not going to get rid of that. Right? Yeah. So what does it mean? It means there's times that the righteous have got to hunker down and just uh, wear the storm to a point. But what do we do? We make shifts. We make changes out of our heart. We speak the word of God. We stand. Yeah. Amen. So you can go back and read your Bible. I know Christians don't like to hear this stuff, but you know, if it's in the Bible, then it's good enough for me. Yes. Right? Until you write your own. <laughs> I'm going to work on his. Amen. Right? And, and there's times in the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, right? There's times in the Bible that the righteous had to endure some unrighteous things because they were caught up in what was going on. Because the bulk of people, those in high authority and stuff, were not righteous. Right? And so God doesn't just, you know, <laughs> wink and say, you, you know, judgment isn't going to come, you know, because I've got a, a, a righteous person. Right? I mean, well, what about Lot? Well, what about Lot? What if there was ten righteous? What if God found ten righteous and he wouldn't destroy the, the nation? Well, does that mean that, that everyone in Sodom and Gomorrah got off? Scott free and, and all of a sudden their lifestyle was okay. No, it's never okay. There is judgment. People, I know Christians don't like that word, but there's still verses in the Bible that says that God still looks at, 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 at the, the world and there is judgment. There is, you can take something too far to where the grace of God. And the mercy of God is not going to condone or, or watch over that. And you come to a place that, and we talk about judgment, but it's not punishment. We've got we to understand what judgment is. Judgment is not punishment. That's what most Christians think. You know, well, if God doesn't judge America, then he's got to uh, apologize. Apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. God will never apologize to anyone. Right? <laughs> And see, he's not out judging America. He judged Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Right? So it isn't coming from God. The things we don't like in, in, in the world and, and the degradation and, and everything, it's coming from man, not God. Right? Well, why didn't God stop it? Because he gave that authority to us. Yes. Yes. Come on. yes. So everyone is crying out, do something, God. You do something. <laughs> if there's enough of us Yudas that get together in the spirit then something will happen and that's what's going on now is the Yudas have been praying right and so there is something happening it is happening well I don't see it that's because you don't walk by faith so those that know how to walk by faith, those that know who they are in Christ, yeah. keep praying, keep yeah. speaking, yes. keep opening your door to yes. righteousness. Yes. Right? Not news. Right. Not opinions. No. Not heated discussions and conversations. And talking about them and, you know, don't don't buy into that separation of us and them, no matter who it is. Come on. We stand in Christ. This is yes. God's nation. 
He created it, right? He sent it. This is the only nation that I know of, the only nation in the world in existence that was started by God by sending a church. Right? Now we know that there was Native American Indians that were already here, all right? But it wasn't the United States of America at that time, right? That came about. But how many of you know that we've had some problems ever since they stepped foot on this continent? Amen. I mean, has it been been just wonderful and awesome? We look at the things that are going on now. Have you ever seen what's gone on? You know, what, what went on in the 60s? What went on in the, the 70s? What went on in the 80s? Hey, listen, it isn't new. It's just different people involved. Right? So we're the ones that stand and say, bless God in the name of Jesus, this nation will right itself and yeah. see that God is their God. Yes. Right? And for the righteous sake, God is going to move. Amen? Now look at this. He said, lift up your heads, O you gates. In other words, split open your mouth and let your heart start speaking righteousness and goodness. Right? Now the word door there, everlasting doors, everlasting is eternal or never ending. The word door is an entrance to an opportunity or a righteous action. That's what door means. It's an opportunity. It is a righteous action. But the gate is the heart that, that centers on, on humanity. It's, it's, a, it's a deeper uh, foundation. You see, when, when, uh, when Adam fell, he did it willingly. He knew what he was doing when he went to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and he partook. Eve was deceived, but Adam wasn't, right? But he never did go to the tree of life which should have been the first, he should have beat feet right over there uh, after, you know, God breathed life into him. You know, for some reason he didn't. Not sure why, right? But through that fall, then sin came in. What was sin? Sin wasn't degradation of all the sun. The sin that came in is self-centeredness. Yes. I become my own God. I become the God of my own world. I'm the one that decides what I believe, you know, and, and what I say. Hello. And listen, you can sit here and you can listen to some of these most amazing messages that anyone has ever heard, right? Right. And walk out and just live the same way you did before you came here. Until that door opens, the gate opens, and you say, you know what? I accept change because I desire a different outlook and a different life. Right? And instead of trying to get it through my efforts, if I just had ha, had more money, if I just had, you know, a, a, a different spouse, if I just had, you know, you can change anything and everything out there in the natural. And you're left with you. Right? And so the change comes inside. I need to accept the change. If I could do it, I would have done it. Right? So it's something that the Holy Spirit does by the grace of God to bring the change. But I need to be willing to help. Right? Don't hang on to attitudes. Let them go. Yeah. Let them go. Amen? Now look at this. He says, The mouth opens to allow an entrance through the door of our heart. It means the glorious copiousness and the glory will be created around us. Copiousness means abundance. And everyone has a different abundance. A different idea of what abundance is. Right? Somebody for an abundance, it, it's, it's three Lamborghinis. You know, because I can't decide which color. So I need yeah. three. That's, that's my abundance. And another person says, you know, just, just a, a dependable car that gets me to where I'm going. It's good. Yeah. Right? So people look at him and say, well, God really likes this guy. He's got three Lamborghinis. You know, that's just what he, he thinks he needs. <laughs> right? So does God say, no, you can't have that. Give one of those to this person. No, why? Because it's his desire. Not yours. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Right. 
that, that do not raise your hand on this <laughs> or smile, just look solemn. <laughs> How many of you have ever judged what somebody else has? Oh, yes. And figured and determined they didn't really need it. <laughs> <laughs> or why then? Yeah. Put your hand back down. <laughs> no, why them? Okay, or why not me? How come they're more blessed? I'm the one that makes it to church every Sunday. <laughs> they just come once in a while. Right? Come on now. See, when we get into judging ourselves among ourselves, we just become a fool, a loser. Why? Because it's their heart, their relationship with God, That's and right. God provides for them. That's right. How do you change yours? By changing you. Yep. Not by trying to convince God to bless you. He did. Yes. He did. But it's hard for us to get out of the natural to see that in the spiritual, everything's been done. That's right. Everything you think you need or would like to have God gave it to you long ago. Amen. Right? It's up to us to begin to open ourselves and begin to accept and receive what God has given us. Right? Yeah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Did you get something out of that? Yes. yes. Okay, let, let, me, let me say this in, in, in closing. In, in Psalm 35, verse 27, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause, and let them say continually. What does continually mean to you? Over and over and over again. Okay. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Right? Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Do what? Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Now, what, what's he? Well, you're getting by and you're, you're, you're basing everything on your desire. But see, this is showing you what the truth is, is that God's desire is to prosper you. Okay? But he needs you to open the gate and open the door. He needs you to know in your heart that God has already prospered you. And that's where the thanksgiving comes out. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in his earth. My God loves me. He's in love with me and he gives me money. Amen. He prospers everything I do. Everything my hand is laid to Amen. comes to a blessing. I'm blessed, yes. I'm blessed, yes. I'm blessed, I'm yes. blessed. There are no limitations because I open the gate of my heart and I open the door to my mouth and righteousness is being <coughs> made manifest around me, right? For what? For a blessed life, for the kingdom of God, that I can be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Amen. Adore Amen. you. So what are we saying? We're saying that your heart, the subconscious, <clears throat> has no idea what's keeping your gate. It can be fear. It can be past experiences. It can be all kinds of things. You see, after Adam fell, <coughs> when God came down, to Cain, because Cain bought into that self-centeredness, that self-righteousness. And he looked at his brother, and his brother, his offering was accepted by God, but God didn't accept his. And you know, there's nothing in there that says that God wouldn't accept it, you know, or anything. But somehow, there was something about the shedding of blood that they knew and, and, and Abel gave 
the tithe or the offering out of the flock of the shedding of the blood. And it also says that he also offered the fat of the kidney, which later became something that was separated, was God's only. Something special. Right? Well, Cain was just as gracious. He was just as giving. But he was giving from the fruits of a cursed ground. And somehow there had to have been something there that, that he knew that that wasn't what God required. Right? So it was an act of faith. But he gave it anyway. And then God said, Cain, sin is at your gate. What? The gate is the heart. The heart is what, what, what uh, changes your, your outlook, your philosophy of life. Right? And he said, sin is at your gate. What is sin? Sin is, is seeing that there's something but unable to get. Right? See, we think sin is lying and stealing and adultery and all. Well, all that is sin, but that's not the sin that first started. The, first, the, the sin that first started is, is, is wrong desires and no way to get it. And he wanted the affirmation that Abel got by offering the right sacrifice, but he didn't want to offer it. Right? Come on. Come on. He wanted to get it from God by self-works when Abel offered it and said, you know, this is unto you and the worship, right? So sin was at the gate. And what happened? So Abel, I mean, Cain went down and he killed his brother. What was that? That was the first shedding of human blood. And the first shedding of human blood opened that gate into the human nature. And from that point on, the religion began to be built through Nimrod that the most vile and the most wicked and the most ungodly you can be, the higher you could elevate into the religion of man or religion of Nimrod, the mighty hunter, right? Who incidentally, his ancestors were the ones that, that made Nineveh and, and, uh, and, and God had to send Jonah over there, right? And Jonah, Jonah, Jonah just said, you know, kill me, do whatever you want. I'm not going to those. They are the wickedest people ever. But the mercy of God was still there, right? And out of that compassion and that mercy, the town of Nineveh repented, yes. okay? Which made the prophet so mad, right? <laughs> so you see that we can develop attitudes against sinners, against wicked people, vile people, right? To the point that we won't allow mercy to come out to them. Come on. When the same blood that was shed for us was shed for everybody, right? And so the blood of Christ is the answer, but it needs to come out of a righteous gate. Yes. So when Christ died, he shut that gate of the human sacrifice you know, for mankind. And he opened the righteous gate into the spirit. And so when you're born again, you're removed from the natural world. We are no longer of this world, even though we're in it. Meaning that we should not allow self-centeredness to rule us and dictate us. We've accepted Christ. We've accepted the Holy Spirit. We've accepted the Word of God, right? We should yield ourselves over to those things. So it isn't about what can you get from God because he died. You know, it's what can I give? What can I give? See, a lot of people just get excited when you preach all the benefits. You know, you can become a millionaire. You can be healthy. You can be, you know, and all that's true. All of it's true, right? But that's not the best foundation of a life. A life is the same as Christ, right? It's what can I give? What can I do? Who can I help? Right? And out of that foundation is an openness to, 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 uh, to support all that, that you can believe for, everything that, that, that comes in. Because you realize 
that most Christians, as they become wealthy or they begin to, to be self-sufficient and get all the, the stuff, they become uh, harder and, and more and more callous to God. Right? It, why? Because I got this stuff. You know, what if he wants me to give it away? And so I start deadening my hearing. <laughs> right? Come on now. Well, if he gave it to you in the first place, can't he get it to you again? Right? So what I'm saying is that we need to activate the gate of our heart, you know, into the gate of, of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Christ and realize I'm not of this world. I'm not. I'm not of this world. I'm in it. I'm not of it. And you've got to come to the place that you fully accept it, you understand it, you receive it, and you know it. And then you'll quit being moved and being upset about everything going around on around you in this world, right? Not dead to it, not turning your eyes to it, because you know that out of your heart goes through the door, the eternal door, right, that opens up, and we have the authority and ability to change things, right? But don't use that authority in the negative. Don't use that, that, that authority to agree you know, with, with, with all the strife and everything that is, that is going on. Use it as peace. Use it as, as, as an authority to bring down the wicked, to lift up the righteous, to know that God is, is doing something. God is working right now. Amen. Now, it may not be what you thought. You know, it may not be what you want. But it doesn't matter when you're in with God. You know that the result is going to be worth it no matter what it is. Right? No matter what. Well, thank you for listening to me. Praise God. And uh, when you finish, put, put, your, put your hand on your gate <laughs> and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Open up my gate to righteousness, that it'll open up the door of my mouth to righteousness, in Jesus' name, amen, thank you.